Las Vegas. Welcome to Vegas Realty Check, your local Las Vegas real estate news show happening right here. Uh, I'm your host, Tiana Carroll, and my beautiful co-host, Trish Williams, is not here today, but she will be back next week. We shoot every Thursday and broadcast um, at 9.30. We're a little late this week. You'll have to forgive us. We had some furniture being moved into the studio. You'll get to see that next week if you're watching us on our YouTube channel. And if you are, thank you for your support. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, so that way you're notified each week when we uh, have our episodes and you can join us and find out all the haps on what's happening in Las Vegas. This week we have a great show for you. Today we are talking to both a title, a lender, and of course myself, a realtor, who are going to help navigate um, home buyers through the buying process here in Nevada. Before we do that, though, one of the things we cover each and every week is our local real estate housing statistics and numbers. So if you've been following along, you know that we've been playing right about 4,000 um, homes available on the market, and that stock really hasn't changed uh, that much this week. We are at about 3,600. And 82 active listings this week. We have 347 sold that sold in this last week and 488 price decreases. Again, if you're watching the show, you know these numbers are playing around the same level every week. Nothing really has changed in the past, say, month, month and a half on those. So enough about the real estate statistics. Now let's get into the show. Today I have two amazing women with me who are very versed and know exactly how contracts and escrows and conveying title and getting you money and everything a first time home buyer would need to know about buying a house here in Las Vegas. And I'd love to introduce him to him now. First, we have Tracy Bennett. She is the vice president of sales at First American Title Insurance here in Nevada. Good Welcome, morning. Welcome, Tracy. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. I appreciate you coming out and uh, having this conversation with our guests today. My pleasure. So that's awesome. Thank you. And then on the lender side, we have Michelle Bezlow. She's a returning guest. She's um, the senior loan officer at Fairway Independent Mortgage. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. Okay. So you heard me talk about numbers. So numbers may or may not affect escrow, but not in the same capacity that they would affect escrow for our, our lender, right? So tell me when you hear me say things like 300 and, uh, or 3,682 homes available on the market, Michelle, what do you think? It's a little low. Seems to be a little low. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely would like to see more. Yeah. So, but um, as the lender, you're in the same sort of realm that I am dealing with this weird market that we're mm -hmm. in. Because even though 3,682 homes technically would be a seller's market, right? Mm -hmm. We are seeing odd things on your contracts. Are you getting concessions for your buyers? I am. I still am seeing concessions. I'm still seeing sellers willing to negotiate and make things happen Okay. Um, because it is an elevated rate market. And part of that is asking for money to help buy the interest rate down to make it more affordable for our first time home buyers. Yeah. 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 That's this type of thing I'm seeing too, because mm -hmm. there's not very many times where you're in a seller's market and then you have the opportunity to get concessions for your buyers. That's almost unheard of. So welcome to our weird market. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get talking to the life of a contract, basically going to be the subject of the show today. I did want to cover some headlines that are going on in Las Vegas. But first, I want to do a shout out to the Las Vegas Aces. Not only were they the first professional um, sports team in Las Vegas to bring home a championship, but guess what? They did it back to back. So <laughs> congratulations to those Las Vegas Aces ladies. You're killing it. Good job. And then uh, a couple quick notes that I just want to throw out there that's going on in sort of the development or change of our city as it grows. Uh, we, you know that Hollywood West is moving to Las Vegas. Have you guys heard that? So Hollywood West is moving to Las Vegas, and then Universal Studios is putting in an attraction here. Yes. So yesterday, they came up with the new official name. It's going to be housed over at Area 51, if you're unaware, that, and it's going to be year-round, and it's going to be a horror-themed wow. um, sort of attraction, theme parky experience and it is going to be called universal horror unleashed so we officially have a name vegas what's up <laughs> so that's interesting uh last night the city of henderson opened up a forum because they are now having um they're doing the uh 
I want to say redefining Boulder Highway. I don't know if that's reimagining Boulder Highway, I guess is a better word for it. And they're putting in a bunch of money. They're moving buses to the median, take, pulling all that medium out and moving buses so traffic can flow. They're adding lights for security for pedestrians and things are going on. Like So all of that happened last night. Some residents are upset because they think moving from three lanes of Boulder Highway down to two lanes of Boulder Highway is going to sort of jam up their community or whatever, but I think with the bus lanes in the middle and then having more control over that corridor, they'll be able to time the lights better. At least that's the hopes of the city. That's why the forum happened last night. And then uh, Jay Dodd from, um, he's a developer here in town, he bought the Huntridge and he has got um, the city to sign off on an expansion of the Huntridge Theater. Did you guys hear about this? No. I saw that last night. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of cool, right? So at Huntridge Theater, not only is it going to be the concert hall, which was a theater concert hall when I was growing up in town, um, shut down. It's now coming. It's by downtown um, Charleston, like Maryland Parkway-ish. And um, now they've got the okay to go ahead and add a cabaret and a... Uh, concert hall and a theater there at that so they'll be expanding that I think that's wonderful yeah that's cool mm -hmm. you grew no you didn't grow up here no. but you but you know all about yeah. Vegas history well downtown certainly has grown and everything that they're putting in expanding I think it's great it just more things for us to do. Yeah, and there's so much development going mm -hmm. on in the city right mm -hmm. and so there's always things constantly um, being built, growing, expanding. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's why you come to this show, right? To sort of figure out what's going on in Vegas, what's growing. So thanks for that, you guys. <laughs> All right, so that covers my headlines. Any news or information you guys want to talk about? Nope. Nope, we'll, we'll let you. Well, you guys start. are quiet as a mouse. Good thing I like to talk. <laughs> you had coffee. <laughs> I did not have coffee. I have water in this cup, just so you guys know. Or vodka. I don't know. You do. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's water. It's 930 in the morning. Well, 10 o'clock now. Because we are a little late today, but that's okay. All right. So, um, one of the, oh, another headline that I didn't even cover that leads us right into our show. That would have been my bad, right? Um, was that... Um, there's a huge exodus of millennial buyers coming into Vegas from Arizona, Utah, and California. They are all first time home buyers and they are flocking to this state because of our affordability in comparison to the states they're in, as well as the tax benefits. But they, when they get here, they really don't know much about buying homes in Las Vegas. And it varies from state to state, right? It's not sort of regulated the exact same across the country. Each state has its own sort of wiggle rooms. Like some states are lawyer states where you bring a lawyer to the closing table in the real estate deal. Vegas is a title and escrow state, so we don't have that. So Tracy, you're a senior VP of sales in um, for First American, which is a title escrow company here in town. So um, when people come to you and they ex do they expect lawyers? How to? It depends. If they're from the East Coast, they may be expecting an attorney to be involved and and ask what is escrow. So um, in, <laughs> well, in so Nevada, what is in escrow? Nevada, um, an escrow officer, the, the best way to think about it is an escrow officer handles the money. So we are a disinterested third party. We, we follow instructions from the contract that you'll get from Tiana, from the lender. When Michelle does your loan, her company's gonna send over lender instructions. We do what we're told to do with no bias for either side. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let me sort of backtrack a little bit uh, to that effect so then I can get on track so I can effectively make sure that these new millennials coming to the town know exactly what to expect. So when you're looking to purchase a home, there's going to be lots of people in your sandbox playing to help you get to close that home. First and foremost is going to be um, your lender because you're not buying a house without money. And then you're gonna have your realtor because you're gonna want somebody who is experienced and knows the laws of Las Vegas real estate. They wanna make sure that they're navigating that contract for you and helping you get the best deals. We work on negotiations. We sort of advise you through the entire buying process. And then you do have this third party um, 
company, the escrow company, they are unbiased. They get the contract. They run it just like an instruction book. Whatever that contract says is how they're going to disperse money, what the time frame is, et cetera. So that's basically what we're going to talk about in a little more detail on all of those things. By the time, first, some people start by getting a realtor first and then connecting with a lender. Some people get a lender first and connect with a realtor. But really, before you go on any showing, you're going to have to have both. Isn't that right? Correct. We definitely don't want you out there looking at homes, falling in love with something, and then finding out that you can't afford it. So we <laughs> right. definitely would like uh, you to come in, get fully pre-approved, take a look at uh, what the numbers mean to you as far as payment and also cash to close. Those are the two most important things in the transaction, making sure everybody's comfortable before you actually take them out, get them interested in a home, making an offer, getting it accepted um, to make sure that all of a sudden... You know, it's something that you can't afford or want to spend on. Yeah, the money is a super big, important part yes, of uh, buying a house. <laughs> kind of important to have the funds. And so once I get a prequal letter and you, you either I help you find a lender that is working in the Valley that my clients know, like trust and have closed deals with me before, or you come to me with a prequal, it doesn't matter, right? You're, you're the the borrower, you get to decide, shop your rates, see who works best for you, make sure you, that they communicate well with you and you like your lender. Once you have a good lender in place and you have your good realtor in place, <laughs> uh, then you get the fun part of the transaction, which is the showings, right? We're going to open houses, we're seeing homes, we're really touring. Once you go and you say, okay, this is the house that I want to offer on, you're making an offer. Just because you make an offer doesn't mean that you're going to get that house. You get uh, The seller will then have the option to accept, reject, or counter that offer. But assuming everything goes smooth, they accept your offer, and we don't have to go through any negotiations at that point, then we're going to go into contract. And what happens? Happens, once you go into contract, you open escrow. That happens immediately after two signatures by your end seller on a fully executed contract. Like I said, escrow is the um, title company that is going to be an unbiased third party who is going to just execute the instructions of that contract. When people open up contract, Tracy, they usually um, will get an opening package and mm -hmm. then they'll have to put in an earnest money deposit. Correct. Okay, and what? How, how do we determine what that earnest money is? That's something that's negotiated really with the agents and okay. the buyers and the sellers on what is acceptable to all parties. So there's no rules on escrow. I need ten thousand dollars to open escrow. There's no rules. No, there's no rules. It is all negotiable. And once they put that earnest money deposit in, is that money disappear into space, Michelle? Or what's that <laughs> earnest money? What is that three thousand they're putting down? Tracy takes care of that. She makes sure that it's safe and okay, um, good. it's good. not Thank touched. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> You're welcome. And we um, also work closely with the agents to make sure that we protect that money should something happen in the future and you do need to cancel. There are contingencies built into the contract that okay. the realtor will go over with you to make sure that uh, the appraisal comes in, we know what the value is, that it supports the price that you are going to buy the house for, as well as um, the loan contingency, making sure nothing happens from the time that you've been pre-approved through underwriting and get to closing, nothing's changed at all. That's right. And that EMD does go towards your down payment. Correct. So that money isn't lost in space. It's credited. That yes. is credited back to you as part of your down payment, yes. which is important. So beginning of the contract, we've opened escrow with Tracy's company. They're going to run the contract and keep us in line on that. They're also doing title work on the back end, right, Tracy? Correct. So what happens when escrow is opened, um, the escrow officer will get with our title department, give them all the information about the address, the seller, the buyer. We will search the property and make sure that you will, as a buyer, receive that property free and clear with assurance that it is your house and it is a marketable title. And so our escrow officers work with title. You will, you, everything is kind of behind the scenes as far as the buyer goes, but we will be working closely with, with your realtor and the lender to, make, to, to alert them of anything that needs to be cleaned up or taken care of. And I'll give you an example. Here's a simple example. Let's say Tiana, um, in her neighborhood, there's a house she really loves. Mm, and I do love that house. <laughs> she goes to her neighbor and knocks on the door and says, if you're ever considering selling, I would just, I will just write you a check. And the neighbor says, okay, I am going to, I am going to sell. And Tiana doesn't say, let's get title insurance. And she writes the check. 
the neighbor gives her the keys, moves out of the house, and Tiana finds out later that there's a $200,000 IRS lien that has been filed against the seller's name, which also attaches to the house. So she now owns a house with a $200,000 IRS lien. Whoops. That's right, because it conveys with the property unless it's settled at at the sale through title. Yes. Correct. So you do not want any clouds or encumbrances on your title. That is why we have and title and escrow here in the state to make sure that those titles convey from one seller to a new buyer cleanly. Clean. Right? Correct. I love that. All right. So you have title in the background, making sure that you have a clean title going to you as the new buyer, which is everything you ever want. Trust me, you don't want to be stuck with somebody else's debt on your house. So, and then on the in the background of that contract as a realtor, I'm going through due diligence. We're ordering home inspections. We're negotiating requests for repair. All of that is happening. Now, simultaneously, you touched on it a little bit in the EMD question. You said that you are doing doing an underwriting process in the background. So people, they don't just show up, write an application and be like, give me money. There's more? (laughs) So yes, so we definitely want to fully vet you uh, as far as your income, what you're making per month, and also your credit. Credit's very, very important as well. So we meet, and as you know, not everyone's the same. No two circumstances are the same. So. I've never had two <laughs> clients the same, so I get it. So our first meeting, there's a lot of questions, and I'm very, very nosy. I ask a lot of things, and it's because in my head, I'm going through quite a few programs trying to figure out what is the best thing that I can offer this client in order to purchase this home, what program works the best, what are we looking to do. So it's it, it's the beginning is very tedious which is why we suggest doing all of this before you even start looking yes but once you do decide what the loan is going to be for that particular person because there's a ton of mortgage products Mm -hmm. out there and like she said every person is different and every program is different it's Mm going to have different criteria of what it takes for the borrower to get that funds right Mm -hmm. so anything first-time home buyers are usually a little more straightforward, right? You might have like a down payment assistance, Mm -hmm. an FHA or a conventional. There's not a lot of creative lending that goes on with first time home buyers, are there? There's still programs out there. Um, There's something for everyone and just dependent upon, again, comes down to the questions. How long are you gonna be in the house? Um, Is this a house that you intend to rent out later on? Are you going to keep this? So there are down payment assistance programs. There's many of them. Um, Some of them have to do with where you're going to be living in one of the cities, Henderson, North Las Vegas. Some of them uh, are through unions, culinary union. There are a lot of programs, so. There are a lot of programs. Mm -hmm. She does have a lot of mortgage products. So when you are broaching the idea of moving to get your home and especially if it's your first time you're going to want to make sure and check with a lender who is knowledgeable in your area not only the time frames of the contract because those are important i want to talk about those next Mm -hmm. but um the time frames in the contract but also um oh i lost my train of thought i got sidetracked with the contract (laughs) okay anyway Somebody steer me back. What was I saying? You're talking about the, the dates on the contract. Okay. The contingency. Well, no, before there. the dates on the contract, I wanted to make sure. Oh, there's tons of different products for you to go ahead and shop. So you're going to want to get with the lender and see what works best for you, what product is available, and how we can how a lender can best service you so you can get that house. Correct. All right. So that so title is working on the actual title of the house lenders are working on the money we're going through due diligence there is a certain amount of things that as a first-time home buyer you should know there are going to be two out-of-pocket expenses that are going to be specific to a house and not to the home buying process and that's going to be your home inspection and your appraisal the first one is the home inspection which your realtor will help you navigate um, if you don't have a home inspector they can help you find one that their clients have used successfully in the past and then and um, they're going to go in, take a snapshot of the house, and give the new buyer an idea of what that house looks like. At that time, the realtor can then negotiate any kind of request for repairs or anything like that. But that is paid out of pocket first, and that happens for each house. So if you don't like the house that you were in contract with, and that contract gets canceled, and you move on to the next house, then that's going to be a fee that you're going to incur there. Also, there is an appraisal fee that comes from the lender, and that's specific to the house too, right, Michelle? Correct. And we don't actually... Uh, want to order the appraisal until your inspection is back and we know that you're okay with the house because we don't want you throwing money out the door Um, and again as you said if they cancel on the contract 
they're out the money with the inspections, but the earnest money, again, Tracy's keeping it safe. So. Yeah, Tracy's keeping that safe. And that earnest money is protected in a bunch of different places in the contracts here in Nevada. So um, it's protected during your due diligence, which is a ne negotiable time frame, but seven to 10 days is usually pretty standard for that here in the Valley. And then it's also protected if you're buying in a common interest community, most people call those HOAs. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're buying in a CIC, then you have um, your money is protected at that time so you can review the CIC package and make sure that you're okay with all of the rules and regulations, bylaws, and the financial health of the community. And it's protected there. And then it's a it protected during that appraisal contingency. Okay. So after the home inspection, you order that appraisal, they come out. If that house appraised, you're in contract to buy that house for 450,000, but it only appraised at 425,000, the bank's not gonna give you that extra 25 grand, is it? No. No, <laughs> no, because they don't want to give no, you more it's than worth it's that. worth. <laughs> exactly. So that's a time where your realtor would renegotiate. Sometimes those appraisals come in at um, contract price and it's fine. The lucky ones, they come in above appraised value, and yes. then you're walking into equity. And again, the appraisal stays with the buyer. The seller doesn't know about it. So that's right, because mm -hmm. the buyer pays for it. And that's the same thing with the home inspection, right? As a buyer, you're paying for those two products, so they technically belong to you. They're good negotiating tools to give to uh, your realtor to help them negotiate if you want requests for repairs or to adjust the price um, if they come back with some sort of discrepancy in that appraisal. Now that EMD is also protected in the uh, loan contingency because as you get the loan, like we said, it's not like, oh, you got a prequal letter, here's the money. There's a lot that goes into that. They're in the background underwriting everything and that loan contingency, I like to do like a 21 to 24 day. I know we've done some closings that happen lickety split within like 17 days. Yes. And then, um, so I'm pretty sure every gray hair might, <laughs> on your head, you. yes. yeah, every gray hair on that head of hers might be from me. I'm like, I need this loan closed in yes. 15 days. Yes. Can we do this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but during the loan contingency, that earnest money is in fact still protected because Tracy, your company is the protector of the funds. We're a protector of the funds. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> All of your money is in a trust account. And that is another important um, thing to consider when you're working with a title company, how long they've been around. Yes. We've been around since the 1800s and are a nationwide company. So yeah. we have financial strength. Yes, they have financial strength. They will keep your money in the account and safe, and they will execute your contract exactly the way it is written out. So I trust the company. I've worked with the company, so I do love that. Now, they also do other things, like when you take title of a property, I'm going to come to you for vesting. Is that okay? Oh, sure. Okay, so when you take title of a company, there's different ways that you can hold these properties in title. Will you explain a little bit uh, about well, that? Well, I'll, I'll give you another example. And essentially... We are, we're a disinterested third party. We can't give you legal advice or tax advice. We can give you a cheat sheet on how to hold title and what the different types of vesting mean, but then you still may want to go to your tax uh, person and, and get an opinion. For example, a lot of people hold title as joint tenants. So Tiana and her sister, they hold tenants as, or they hold title as joint tenants with right of survivorship. That gives right of survivorship. So if something happens to Tiana, her sister just files an affidavit of death and title is transferred to her sister in full. There's no probate. Um, but let's say um, Sally and Joe just got married and they both have kids from different families or from different marriages. And Sally wants her assets to go to her children and Joe wants his assets to go to his children there might be a better way to hold title than tenants in common so it is something that we can give you the the information on and you may just want to if you're in a situation with like that you may want to reach out to a to an accountant yeah yeah there's and uh, with all of this if you feel like you're not getting the information that you need or you want to dive deeper, then absolutely check with a lawyer, check with your CPA, make sure that everything is on the up and up. We're here to guide you through it. We won't know exactly the knowledge that you have, so we won't know what gaps are missing, but we're going to try and help you get there. And if you need more assistance, of course, the CPA and the lawyer are always great options. And yeah. we work closely with both of those and have contacts in those realms as well. And home inspectors and all of the other stuff that goes on with real estate. Yes. So. 
that's that. So um, once these contingencies are over, though, that EMD is no longer protected. So by the time you're at the end of the due diligence, you've gone through the CIC package, you've gone through your appraisal, your loan contingency, you're coming to the end of the contract, right? So that means titles made sure that it is clear, there are no encumbrances there, and it can transfer cleanly. Then the lender has been like, this is all good. This person is going to be financeable. So then once you're out of that due diligence and we're getting ready to close does who wants to walk me who's volunteering here to walk me through the steps that happen next well once all of that's done from our end we are notified by the lender that the documents are ready and that the buyer can come in and sign so in nevada the seller and the buyer sign separately so the seller may have already signed their documents or they may be signing at a different location simultaneously that really doesn't matter, but the um, the buyer will come in, the documents will be explained, they'll sign, and then we we will fund with the lender. And right. yeah, the title and escrow really work closely together. Most people. I guess in the transaction, don't realize how much communication and work is going on behind the scenes with the, with the escrow and the, and the lender. lender. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you guys work very closely together because yes. you've got to get not only the loan docs to the title office so it can go for these mm -hmm. signings, but then you have to fund the loan. Right. Right. So Fairway, one of the reasons I love my company is we actually send the loan documents and the money at the same time. So escrow's already I in do receipt love that about your our wire. Too. So that's why we're able to do same day fundings. So so by the time the documents have made it to Tracy's office, she's gone ahead and scheduled the appointments. The money's there. We're waiting on the buyer's money, maybe. And then it's very nice and smooth at the end. Yep. And so in Las Vegas, if you're, say, from a lawyer state, you sit at the closing table by your seller, lawyer, sign all the paperwork, hand the keys over there. That doesn't happen in this state. Then when it works with escrow, like Tracy said, buyers and sellers sign at different times, could be different locations, different um days of the week, whatever, as long as they both come in and sign, the contract's good. So that's all nice. And um, once they, all the paperwork is signed and the loan is funded, now Fairway, they do send the funds with the paperwork. A lot of lenders don't do that, Tracy, I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, once the documents are signed, if they're not a company like Fairway, all of the loan documents, all of the title documents, all of the real estate documents are signed. They are then sent to the county to be once they're signed, they're sent to the lender. A lender would then go through and make sure everything's signed correctly. Then they fund the loan. Once the loan is funded, title and escrow then goes and records everything with the county. And they send out a little note saying, congratulations, your house has um, closed. Here is your deed. And then once you are the title on the owner on title, then is when you'll meet with your realtor and you'll get those keys and you'll be a homeowner. <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. We made it to the finish line. We made it to the finish line. <laughs> it seems like a um, hurry up and wait thing for the buyers, mm -hmm. though, because buyers, when they come in, there's so much at the beginning. You're looking at houses, you have due diligence, it's all right in the front. And then there's sort of this lull yes. of time, and everybody's like, What's going on with my loan? What's going on with my uh, house? What's going on with my contract? And this is and what's we're going all on. Working in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's this is hard. what's happening in the background. <laughs> title is clearing to make sure you're getting a nice, clean title, no problems. Lenders are making sure that that loan is solid, it is going to be funded, and you are a financier borrower yes yeah so that is pretty much the life of the loan is there anything on the lending side that you want to add that maybe a first-time home buyer might not know or should be prepared for in the process um, I think the biggest thing uh, we see this a lot someone will call and say I found this house I want to make an offer let's go and again it really does behoove you if you know it's coming up and you know you're gonna start looking have your credit checked earlier than later. We do soft pulls. It doesn't affect your credit score. There might be something that shows up. How many times has something shown up at our appointments? A medical collection you weren't aware of, something showed up. Give yep. us a little bit of time to scrub it and make sure that you're going to get the best terms and the best deal. Yeah, that's great. And if they wanted to have a conversation with you, Michelle, how would they contact you? Um, I believe my uh, Phone number is going to be listed there, 702-350-8040. Um, I am local. I'm off of Fort Apache and Russell. I do travel, so I'd be happy to sit down with you. We could do a Zoom call, phone call, whatever you feel comfortable with. 
All right, great. And before we wrap up, anything on title that you think that the general public, new home buyers, anything should know about what's going Actually, on? Actually, I do. There okay, is great. Th some things have been picking up lately over the last couple of years, and one of them is wire fraud. So I wanted yes, to talk about yes. that really briefly. It, and it's nothing to be afraid of as long as you're as long as you follow the rules. And the rules are, you're gonna get wire instructions from, from our escrow officer, and that is to send in the money that you need to send in to complete your transaction. They're not gonna to go to a realtor, they're not gonna to go to a lender and then be forwarded to you. They're gonna come straight from the escrow officer. Before you send the wire, always pick up the phone and call your escrow officer and verify those escrow instructions. It's amazing how many people have somebody hack their email and don't know it. And these, um, these criminals actually just lurk about waiting for a real estate trans transaction to, to happen. And they see in the emails between all parties, oh, we're getting ready to close. And they will email in at the last minute and email you and say, we've changed our wire instructions and you would be wiring money to an offshore account somewhere. So just pick up the phone and verify wire instructions. It's a, it's a safety check that will, that will save you. Yep. Yeah, and it'll definitely protect you. And that's one of the things that um, as a realtor, I'd always advise the clients because we wire in EMD money in the beginning of the contract and then Correct. you wire in your uh, closing costs at the end of the contract and usually done through wire. And as long as you're aware of it and exactly, exactly what you said, Tracy, just make the phone call, verify that the numbers on your email screen are the same numbers that you're wiring to. And if they're different, trust the human. Right. Yeah. Trust, trust your human, yes. Trust your escrow. <laughs> officer. And, and call the number that you have on file for your escrow officer, not the phone number in the email changing the escrow instruction or changing yes. the wire instructions. Yeah. One thing when um, I open escrow with my buyers, I make sure they have the contact information of the escrow officer coming from me. It puts a little liability on me because I'm taking that responsibility, but I want to make sure that they have the right person, they have the right email address, and they are getting that. Um, I have not had any wire fraud issues, nor do I intend to, because I am adamant about not only explaining it, but having my clients sign a disclosure, knowing that it is real and how to combat that. So that's great awesome. information. The other thing is actually, and you can ask Tiana for, for this, but we have like this, we have resource guides for, oh. for buyers, um, buying a home, relocating. So. We supply Tiana with that information on request, so just reach out to her and, and ask for a copy or a PDF. Yeah, feel free to give me a call or shoot me a text at 702-379-9948. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions or get you any of that material from the title company that could help you in your home buying experience or relocation to Las Vegas, which is an amazing place to live. So yes, welcome to Vegas, new millennials. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and we appreciate your support. Again, we're here every Thursday at 9.30 a.m. giving you all of the haps on what's happening in Las Vegas real estate. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for Michelle for Thank sharing you. with our audience, and we will see you next week. Have a great week, Vegas. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.